right, what do I need? Hello, lovely people. How are you all doing today? I hope you're well. I'm okay. <laughs> okay, I think we can do better than okay. Rocky Horror fans, yeah. I'm gonna say that I'm okay and that's about it. <laughs> um, look, I mean, I've been saying for a few weeks I'm behind, I missed that chunk of time in March and April because of my back. Uh, the bottom line is, it's I think it's either the 27th or the 28th of March today. I am going to be doing jobs today that I should have done at the end of April. There's no two ways about it. It should have been done at the end of April. Let me have a little think what I'm doing. Rock and corn, chickpeas, cocoa de pampol. I might think about doing that as well. Oh, and the cocoa noir that Jim gifted to me need to find it so um so number one i'm so behind it's ridiculous and frankly if i wasn't doing these things today i probably wouldn't even bother i mean it's just getting too late the other thing is i'm going to try not to get upset so i did that mass of sewings it's two weeks ago today. So all the brassicas, salad leaves, chard, spinach, beetroot, fennel, cucumbers, courgettes, what have you. Um, I showed them to you, it was, it was six days ago that I showed them to you all and everything was sprouting, great, fantastic. And we've had quite a lot of rain, which has been brilliant because almost the whole of April, we didn't have any rain nothing significant maybe a couple of drops evaporate straight away so for the last 10 days or so we've had pretty much every day or every night and sometimes both we've had at least drizzle uh, and at times some really quite heavy rain and that's a huge hallelujah to us gardeners isn't it because a it saves on the time of watering b it saves on the pain of watering logging cans uh, always rain is so much better for our plants than tap water so yay hallelujah to the rain but of course with rain the slugs come out and all those seeds I sowed uh, the majority of them I'm going to have to completely re-sow I had 15 cucumbers I now have two the trays of brassicas I think in most trays, they're at least half gone. The tray of salad leaves is completely gone. Half of my fennel have gone. Um, what else did I plant? Yeah, chard, spinach, they're all... Actually, the chard and spinach are okay. But yeah, otherwise, brassicas. Am I gonna have any brassicas at all? At this rate, no. Cucumbers, <laughs> two. Uh, so, yeah, the truth of where I'm at right now is that there's a voice in my head that says, you know what, Vivi, just, just quit now, just quit. Work with what you've got. So, for instance, oh, and another of my onion from seed has, has gone. What have I got? I've got potatoes, I've got onions, I've got broad beans to harvest yay but otherwise I've got peppers and tomatoes and squash now the minute I put the squash out they could also be demolished by the slugs it looks like we're supposed to have two weeks of dry weather now um, but yeah there is there's definitely a voice in my head saying forget it forget it this year <laughs> you're a loser um, but two things one it's my food if I don't grow it I'm gonna have to buy it if I buy it then I'm gonna have to find extra money from somewhere 
um, and I can do that by getting on with needle and thread sewing and selling my products but if I commit to doing that sewing in order to raise more money to buy food then I really can't attend to the garden. Anyway I'm going to discuss this further at the end of the month when I do my thoughts on because I have been thinking about it a lot this month um, and just to head off any of the trolls who want to say, well, stop talking and just do it. Of course I'm going to do it. I'm going to be here all day today trying to do as much as I can. I'm going to do some direct sewing in a second, which we'll do together. And then in terms of all my climbing beans, the beds still aren't ready. I've still got five beds to prepare. So, of course, the thing about the rain as well is I didn't come to the garden to do any work because... I mean, I could have done, it'd be pretty miserable, but I had work to do indoors, you know, for the shop and sewing and stuff like that. So I still don't have any beds ready for them. So what I will also do today is just get everything sewn in pots so that there's at least a chance of them getting going. And, you know, maybe by the middle or the end of June, they'll be big enough for me to plant out, by which time I will have done the beds. <sighs> yeah, I ain't gone to plant at all this year right but so yeah I was saying you know that it's my food and the other reason why I just I'm going to get stuck in today is because I'm just I'm a fighter I'm a scrapper I will scrap to the very end I you know what if I have to admit defeat at some point further down the line I'll admit defeat but right now I ain't admitting defeat I'm going to crack on and see what on earth I can salvage out of this garden this year. You know, I've paid my rent. I might as well try and get something out of it. <sighs> right, come on. Let's get planting. It's getting quite warm, actually, and, and, and muggy. Um, yeah, come on, let's go planting. Sorry, I, I should have said, so what I'm planting today, this is direct sowing in the beds. I'm going to do my beloved Coco de Pampol. Hopefully I'll have some left over. I will start some in pots too, in case those that come up get mullered by the slugs. I'll be doing my chickpeas. So with my chickpeas, this is my own saved seed um, from last year. Initially, when I very first did chickpeas, which is probably, oh, I'm getting sweaty, about maybe seven, eight years ago, I simply bought a bag of dried chickpeas, dried organic chickpeas from the health food shop, destined for my belly, and siphoned a few off, stuck them in the ground, and they grew. Brilliant. And then the other one I'll be doing today, these beautiful, beautiful, slim little black beans. This is my Burr de Rockencore. And this is a bean that I grow for the pod rather than the bean inside. Virtually all my climbing beans are for the bean inside, either demi-sec or dried. But this one I grow for the pod because it's the most beautiful, creamy, waxy, gorgeous little yellow pod. So, we'll at least... Oh, and the Coco Noir, where did I put it? So, the Coco Noir is... I haven't even looked yet. Ah, oh, someone was asking me about this in comments the other day. That they'd ah oh, I think this must be what it is they said they've got a cocoa bean but it was black is that cocoa de pampol and I said no cocoa de pampol is white cocoa noir so you can see how it looks like the um sorry I didn't hold it very long it looks so similar to the cocoa de pampol but it's black so they're going but what I need to do with those is reaching for something over here Oh, I'm an idiot. I took it out of my bag. Have I made notes? Oh, I'm an... oh no, it's here. <laughs> I thought I'd been an idiot. I brought this down the other day because it's my notebook with my planting guide, my plan in it. And the Coco Noir were, were a gift from Jim. They came after I'd made my plan, so I thought, where can I squeeze them in? And I've remembered where I can squeeze them in. And that is a bed that is prepped is it half prepped or completely prepped so i can put those in today as well they're going right at the top of the garden okay good row markers drill maker seeds i'll grab the rake as well and my watering cans even though we've had a lot of rain the top part of the soil has dried out again so i'll soak all the beds before i make my drills and then we'll get planting 
so as with any seed sowing first job I've given this bed quite a, a, a good soaking and I've sort of just bashed it down with the rake a bit because it was still quite lumpy that's done now to put my row markers out and squeeze any big lumps as I go there's a bunch of sticks little broken bits of uh, old bamboo canes in the middle there that is for row marking actually they're sitting on the strings row marking to divide I'm going to do rocking court in one half chickpeas in the other Oopla. And I still haven't gotten around to making myself a fourth row marker. So I'll get these three, just make little drills. So this is, like I said, this is the rock and core, Burda rock and core beans and the chickpeas. So in terms of their drills, oh, just a couple of centimeters. that one worm here so I don't go back on myself <laughs> I don't even care about straight lines this year I just get everything in there's not enough tension on that string that's what it is and all this one well, yes, and so on until I've got my drills made. Um, I had a question a few days ago. I can't remember if it was on Facebook or on the comments section. But someone was asking me if I pre-soak my beans before sowing them. No. <laughs> um, in this bed, I am going to be doing chickpeas as well. And I did try pre-soaking them one year uh, the thing with that was it made them considerably more fiddly to manage for getting them into the ground I did a couple of rows pre-soaked and a couple of rows not pre-soaked it didn't make any difference in terms of a sort of the germination rate or time so I don't do it because like I said it's it's fiddly and I'm not going to do something fiddly unless it gives me a dramatically better result. So yeah, get these all popped in. <clears throat> Cover the rows back over. Obviously. Is that obvious? <laughs> Obviously. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll water them all again because oh, no. it is a warm day it's going to get warmer but also <clears throat> as you can probably hear in the background how annoying we are quite windy uh, today again and that wind can be really really drying in fact I'm going to get these covered straight away just stop these drills drying out too much it really is as simple as that the bit that's not simple sorry I was turned away from you then the bit that's not simple is the bed prep <laughs> getting the soil to the stage like this where I actually can sew in it good oh, two half rows done it's a start now the chickpeas 
sorry, I forgot to mention spacing with the beans. These rows are about 18 centimetres, 20 centimetres apart. And then I'll plant them oh, 15 centimetres apart. I mean, I'm not, I'm not too fast because you know, I have, I may get poor germination in some places. If there's a gap, I'll plug it with something else. If I can find something else this year to plug it with. But yeah, I'll just let them fight out amongst themselves. Right, well this is another of my overdue jobs, due, due, due jobs, uh, earthing up the spuds. I don't know if you can make out, but between all the spuds, I did manage to rake up a little bit of grass from a, it's quite an overgrown path that had a bit of a mow, so that's in there. The idea being that hopefully it helps to sort of break break up my clay. Wow. So these spuds went in exactly, pretty much exactly four weeks ago. No, 20, yeah, 29th of April, wasn't it? And they've romped away. Yay. Yay for something this year. I just get this little bit done on each side and then as this, the ridge in the middle that I'm drawing the soil from goes down, I make sure both sides have got a bit and then I can go deeper and scratch more up. And then as the potatoes are growing and the potatoes are developing off the sides of the stems, they won't be exposed to light, that's why I'm earthing. My goodness. I'm a little bit late doing it, aren't I? I'm obviously not going to get them completely covered now, but a little bit, like everything this year, a bit is better than nothing. Oh my goodness. And it's getting warmer by the minute. It's a shame in a way, with all the rain, that I couldn't get here on those days because it was considerably cooler. And so for work like digging, it would have been absolutely ideal. Temperature wise. Oh, everything's an effort. Right, that's a little bit. So these are the main crops, these are the cara. I'll do the ones the other side of the rose bush and then get on with the, um, the new potatoes, the Charlotte. Whew, and have a glass of water. I wasn't actually planning on sowing any fennel direct this year. The idea was start them in their modules, pop them out when they're big enough. But, <laughs> oh dear. Um, I've lost three quarters of what I sowed in the modules. So it looks like if I'm lucky, if no more go, I think I've got seven in the modules. So I might, I might as well get this direct seed in because opla, I actually have plenty of seed and honestly the way I feel at the moment it's just whatever I can just chuck it at the garden 
Um, we are desperate measures. Really desperate. Beautiful day. Desperate measures on a beautiful day. Up oh, there. And then in the top end of this little bed, well, sorry, in this end here where the basket is currently sitting, will go my celery. We're oh, just still at home. I've still got so many plants at home to bring down, it's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, celery in this end, the fennel, and then just, it, oh, blah, just in this top end, just a few of the cocoa, cocoa Noir bean from Jim. I think, I'm kind of assuming, presuming, it's a bush type. I hope it's a bush because I'm not putting any supports in. And I think, I think it'll probably fit about 40, 16 plants in there. So if they all come up, that'll be something, won't it? Good stuff, right get these covered, watered, and then I'm going to put nets on them to stop the cats and the foxes from scratching. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shade net on one, well, on two rows, and clear net on two rows. Just want to see if that makes any difference just in terms of the evaporation of the water, uh, that bit of shade, if they prefer a bit of shade to start in. We'll see. Whew. It's getting mighty mighty warm so yeah every every all the beds that i've seeded today they're all going to get another really really good soak before i go home tonight or this afternoon should i say <laughs> these are the best kind of hands aren't they dirty hands <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it when my hands are mucky. Oh, gosh, it's bright today. And it's getting warmer and warmer by the minute. I've just looked at the clock. My goodness, it's one o'clock. I got here at 10.30. 11.30. It's taken me two and a half hours to seed two and a half beds and earth up my spuds. That's what I mean about everything. Oh, hey, pretty bird. That's what I mean about everything just takes too long these days. Right, so, um, I think that's, yeah, <laughs> suddenly thinking out loud. Right, direct sewing done. Now, uh, as I was mentioning at the top, uh, climbing beans. So the areas that the climbing beans are gonna be sewn are not ready yet, structures aren't in. Ah, so I'm going to start them all off in pots. Uh, some of the pots I've got are a little bit on the small side. I've got some bigger pots. What I might, oh, and I've got a load. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Loo rolls, because I don't have much compost. I don't think I've got enough compost to start all my beans. And by the way, that's not me begging for money for compost. That's not the issue. The issue is getting the compost to the garden because I have to make the choice between bringing plants to the garden or compost and at the moment I've been bringing plants. One of the days this week that I didn't come to the garden to do any work because it was chucking down, I did on that day come to the garden with the granny trolley and some compost but these take up less compost because I was thinking about the bigger pots for the bigger beans like the gigantes. So I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to keep you here the whole time I'm sowing beans because it would be frightfully boring. But just say, ah, oh, just before I talk about the climbing beans, I had this come through the post the other day. It's one of these plastic bags that comes from the post office. And it says, our sincere apologies. We're very sorry the enclosed item has reached you in this condition. Let me show you the condition. It looks like there was, I don't know, maybe a little mini pet vampire in the post box because for this absolutely just shredded 
I have opened it and had a look and this one little bit has gone missing. This is from Claire at September Cottage. Thank you so much, lovely. It's some spare squash. And what she's done, this is so cute. So there's a seed, a spare seed. And then she's included, they've got properly mullered a little lolly stick that's already written up with the plant name on it. Do you know what I think? I think a naughty sorting office worker has felt the lump inside this packet and thought it's worth nicking, something worth nicking. So they've shredded my packet and gone, oh, what's that? Oh, lolly stick. So anyway, Claire, thank you so much. There's a jack-o'-lantern, a Turkish turban and some sweet dumpling. I had, well, since they came in the post, I thought, oh yeah, brilliant. I'm going to sew them straight away as backups. I might not for now, I might sit on them because I'm short of pots, I'm short of compost, I'm short of space. And so far, oh, I don't want to jinx myself. So far, the squash I've brought from home are surviving. So, uh, if not in the next few days, then, you know, maybe next year. Anyway, thank you so much. <laughs> I was like half eaten. Lovely surprise though. I knew something was coming. She'd mentioned to me on Instagram that there was something coming. And I just love that little, um, the little lolly stick label markers, plant label marker things uh, it's just really it's a really sweet thoughtful extra on top of a seed it's a really cute idea anyway so the climbing beans we've got some these are good old bog standard runner beans these are Paul's Shaz's runners <laughs> Shaz gave some to Paul he grew them on shared some seed with me I've grown them on and now this is Bibby's, Paul's, Shaz's, <laughs> runner beans, it's Scarlet Emperor, bog standard. I don't grow them for the long pod. Um, I grow them for the beans inside. I mean, I might have a couple of pods, I'm not fussed, but I let them get really, really big and fat it's to that point where the actual pod itself gets really gnarly and stringy. I hate strings. I hate strings on beans, which is why I don't eat, eat them, even when they're young and tender, I hate strings. But yeah, it's a good tip actually for towards the end of the season, if you've had a massive, massive glut of runner beans, you've chopped them, blanched them, frozen them, I'm talking the green pod, you've got your freezers full of them, you're sick of them. With those last remaining few, never to the compost pile. Well, firstly, you'll want to save a few for seed saving. But with the others, yeah, just leave them to get big and fat in the pods. You want to harvest them before the pods start to dry. Definitely before they're rattling, that's your seed stage. But before they get really dry, uh, or start to dry at all, get them off the plants, pod them, and pop the beans in the freezer, and use them, I use them in place of my gigantis in fasolada, my Greek bean stew, if I don't have enough gigantis left. But you use them in any kind of chilli, stew, that sort of thing, when you want a really good, chunky, chewy bean. Brilliant. So, bog standard runners for the beans, not the pod. Helda, which is one I've been growing for years. It's a cross between a French, I'm trying to think now, French bean and a flat, and a runner bean. It's a flat pod, but it's not stringy. And I have that one for the pod. That is one that I have for the pod. Some Borlotti, again for the bean. And then some Coco Sophie for the bean. That's uh, the climbing relative of Coco de Pampol. And then, oh, these three. Hang on a tick. Oh. And quickly, finally, <laughs> my three kind of stars. I've got the, the black Churchill, Churchill black. Again, they're like, it's sort of like a runner bean has crossed with a gigantis. We get lovely big beans, this beautiful, glossy, jet black bean. The pods are gorgeous. They, they, they're sort of green with a purplish streak. And as they develop, that purplish streak gets stronger and stronger. So you've got these beautiful goth purple pods, um, which eventually go almost black. Beautiful. 
and this has become another really a, a favourite, very special, only groomed for the first time last year. This is the Madeira Maroon that I had from Paul. He's been growing it for a few years now and developing his sort of seed collection in order to have some to spare. I believe it came originally from the Heritage Seed Library, but I don't think they have it anymore. And it's not one that you see. I don't think you see it anywhere. So, uh, I grew it for the first time last year. It was really prolific, great. Now, it's, it's great, you can have it for the pod or the bean. Uh, and like I was saying just a second, I, get, I tend to prefer the bean over the pod for most of the plants, for most of my bean plants. Uh, it's the protein. Also, I just like, ang, 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 I like a, a good chunky bean. So, uh, obviously I'm going to grow these this year and I will see if I can grow even one or two extra to just develop some extra seed so that maybe next year I will have seed to share. So yeah, brilliant. And then my absolute firm favourite, my Gigantes. These are my Greek butter beans. Um, let's bring it around that so there's a couple on their side you can see. Whoppers! I just love them. They're oh, absolutely fantastic. So unlike, say, a regular butter bean or lima bean, as you might think, they don't... So like butter beans, they sort of fall apart when you're cooking them which can be lovely because it sort of it sort of thickens up whatever you're doing if it's a soup or a stew they go really soft and oh lovely thick the gigantes don't fall apart like that so for instance in the fasolada the potato I put a bit of potato in it and that is what's helping to thicken up the stew is that breaks apart in cooking but the beans don't so when you get a mouthful it's a really good hearty chew love it so i will get on and get these started loo rolls predominantly pots i just what i'll mm, i think you know what i'll do for once i'll fill all the pots and loo rolls whatever i have with compost first to see how far this compost is going to go then once i've worked out how far it's, it, it will go i can work out I can then divvy out the pots and rolls between the different types of beans because I know, for instance, if I ran out of compost, didn't have enough, I wouldn't bother with the borlotti, so that can sit on the back burner. If I didn't have enough, I wouldn't bother with the helder because in a way, the helder I grow for the pod, I've got the rock and call out there for the pod, so that can go on the back burner. Hmm, definitely Gigantes Madeira Maroon, Churchill Black, Ah, and here's another, because the Coco Sophie, they can go on the back burner because of direct sown all those Coco de Pampol. Let's just hope they come up. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, Craig, it's getting really warm. It's beautiful. Uh, honestly, where I'm at with the garden at the moment is not where I want to be at, not where I would have liked to have been at. As I said right back at the beginning of the video, I'm not a quitter, but on the other hand, I'm going to talk about this more in my thoughts on video right at the end of the month. There is that sort of creeping feeling of, hang on, let's get realistic. There's no point flogging a dead horse, as it were. Not that I'd flog a live horse or a dead horse. I wouldn't flog a horse full stop. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, so... I think it was a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Three, four weeks ago even, when I was saying, let's see where we can get to by the end of May and then reassess the whole situation. So it's not quite the end of May yet. I can, I can, I can keep trying, I can keep pushing, keep trying. And then, yeah, let's see where I'm at at the end of May. Okay, so until then, I might not see you again before Thoughts On, which I'm gonna to film today in the shed because I don't have time to go home. <laughs> I need to, there's so much to do down here. So yeah, it'll be a thoughts on from the shed and it'll be quite a lot about, well, I'll tell you when I see you then. I'm not gonna keep you now. Thank you for hanging out with me in the garden on such a beautiful, beautiful day. <sighs> Trying to stay positive. All right, lovelies, please look after yourselves. Do what you can with your gardens. Um, 
that's all we can do, isn't it? Do what we can. See you soon. Cheerio, lovelies.